I met this guy on what would have been an average morning for me. I got up around 6 a.m. and went about my morning routine as usual. I take the bus because I can't afford to buy a car, and I don't want to waste what little money I make from my crappy job at a driving school. It was around 6.45 a.m. as I made my way to the bus stop. It was still dark outside, and I recalled the wind blowing that morning. It was a nice, quiet morning, one of the many privileges of living in a secluded colony, I guess. Anyway, as I was seated at the bus stop at the end of the street, I heard it. It sounded like a bicycle chain with one of those little bells, you know, on the handlebars. As it got closer, I didn't think it was unusual or terrifying. I live in a safe, quiet neighborhood. There were several other people headed to work who were in a similar situation as mine. But as I was sitting there, daydreaming, someone approached me on a bike. And then I felt a light tap on my shoulder, which made me jump. It was an average-looking man with an average build, I think about 5 feet 10 inches. When he saw me jump up, he apologized and said, I'm sorry that I startled you. I was a bit shaken up, but I told him, it's fine. And he said, what a beautiful day it is. And then suddenly, he repeated the same thing again, saying, it's a beautiful morning. Meanwhile, I was thinking to myself, what the hell was that all about? So I politely replied, yes, yes it is. I tried to get a look at his face but he kept covering it, making sure that I couldn't see him. And I asked, Sorry for bothering you, but do you live around here? I thought it was quite a normal question, since almost everyone around here knows each other. Then he simply replied, I wouldn't say so. No. So I asked, Do you need some help getting around? He seemed puzzled by that, as he paused for a second, and then he said, I hope it's not too much of a bother, but could you help me to find Brook Road? And I said, not a bother, just take a right here, and keep going straight until you get to the third light. He said thanks, and with that, he was off, and the rest of the day went without incident and I had forgotten all about what had happened, at least until the day after. I was sitting on the same bench from the day before, waiting for my bus, when I heard a bicycle approaching. When I turned around, I saw it was the same guy from yesterday. He stopped in front of me again. I said, I don't believe I caught your name. Mine is Anne. For a second, he looked strangely at me, as if I was speaking to him in another language. After an unusually long pause, he said in a rather tired-sounding voice, My name is Andrew. Then I said, Nice to meet you, Andrew. I asked him if he needed any help getting around. Do you think you'll be okay on your own? It's a bit brighter today. I think I'll be fine. He thanked me. I told him that he looked a bit pale and asked if he wanted to borrow my jacket, saying it's kind of big on me anyway. There was a bit of a chill in the air that morning and I worried that he might catch a cold. He paused before telling me I would like that. He said that, thank you very much. So I gave him my oversized jacket and without another word, he was off. The next day, when I heard the bike's chain and that bell, I already knew who it was. I saw Andrew, but something inside my head was telling me that something appeared strange, not quite right. He was halfway down the street. He got off his bike and instead was walking with it. Well, no, more like leaning on it. I noticed that his bike's frame was all crooked and bent, and he was walking with a limp. I assumed that he was leaning on his bike for support. At this point, I was very worried about Andrew. 
Is there anything I can do for you, Andrew? You don't look so well. Maybe a bottle of water. I suggested, but he declined my offer before having a coughing fit. I mean, it was so loud you could hear it all the way down to the end of the street. I patted him on his back, and he appeared to look better, as if my pat suddenly cleared or dislodged something from his throat. He then took a second before saying, with a weaker voice than the day before, I want to show you something on Brook Street. And you know, the one you gave me directions to, he said before going into another coughing spell. <coughs> I always try to help people as much as I can, but I wasn't about to just walk off with this stranger I met two days ago, especially since I didn't know what kind of sickness he had or if he was even sick at all. That is, until I saw maggots crawling out of empty eye sockets, as well as his mouth and various other orifices from beneath his skin, or at least what was left of it. Most people would have probably freaked out at this point, but I saw true pain in his eyes. So after a lot of thought, I decided to go with him. Probably not the smartest decision I've ever made, but definitely the best one, and the one that got me here at that. I stood up, and we walked for what seemed like about 30 minutes or so. We walked until we got to Brook Street, until we passed all three streetlights. There we were at a terrible crime scene. More specifically, a hit and run. There was yellow police tape and everything. I connected the dots, and I guess I made a surprised kind of expression because Andrew said, Yes, I'm the victim of this hit and run. And said, and The next morning when I woke up, I thought it was just a bad dream. Then he went into another coughing episode. <coughs> and he said, I went about my day, but as you can see, I was slowly decaying. That's all I wanted to show you, B but you, you have a kind heart and for helping me with all of this confusion, uh, and I think you should know that at this point I was dumbfounded. What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to say something? I had so many questions that were unanswered, but I just couldn't ask him about them. I was too shocked even to move. After a while of me just standing there, I made my way back to the bus stop. But when I checked the time, it hadn't moved since my first encounter with Andrew earlier. The whole day, though, the encounter with Andrew was all I could think of. I asked myself if I was going insane. I had managed to fall asleep later that night when suddenly I was awoken by that distinct sound of a bicycle chain, as well as the one of those little bells on the handlebars. Then I felt a light tap on my shoulder and I jumped. Sorry I startled you, said Andrew through an unknown way, since he was just bones and didn't exactly have any vocal cords. He placed a neatly folded object at the foot of my bed, and it said, thanks for everything you did for me. I guess he waited for me to respond, but again, I was paralyzed in fear. 
After I didn't move, he took over and said, I will forever be indebted to you, Anne, but I doubt we'll ever see each other again after this. Where are you going, Andrew? I finally managed to get some words out. I know not where I'll end up, but this is goodbye. In case we don't see each other again. Also, I'm thanking you for everything you did. And I said, I just did what seemed right. Well, I appreciate that. Also, thanks for the jacket, but I don't think I'll be needing it anymore. Thank you for listening. I'm John Driscoll. If you like our stories, please just click the subscribe button so you don't miss any new stories. Thanks again, and let me know if this creeps you out. I do listen and read every comment. <laughs>